if you're a very dense cataract, very, 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 very dense cataract, uh, FACO doesn't work. And there's a little bit more history in this particular case. This is a patient uh, who came with a basically light perception cataract mm -hmm. after trauma, after retinal surgery. And when I first started the procedure, this is already later in, I uh, tried to do capsorexis and the lens was so mobile that I couldn't even complete a big capsorexis. It was a white cataract to begin with, so a laser wouldn't have helped. And the zonular laxity, this is actually the whole lens being pushed in the anterior chamber. And there's a very... Um, is the capsule part of it yes, still? Yes, it still is. And there's a large, as you already saw probably here, this is a six millimeter incision on this side. So it's gonna be called a small, a manual small cataract, small incision cataract surgery. It's still large, but smaller than the previous extra caps where we split up the cornea almost 90 degrees. Now I'm trying to, oh, sorry, 180 degrees, trying to get the lens out in one piece. And you can see how that dark brunescent reflex mm -hmm. of the barely can see it through. Mm -hmm. And at this point I have trouble getting it out because the lens is still too big. Um, so as to try and get it out and not enlarge the wound too much, I first try and see if I can move it with two instruments and still that doesn't work. And at some point I tried to cut it in half. That is a huge dense lens there for sure. And at what point did you make the decision that this was going to need to be the manual small incision cataract surgery as opposed to a fake emulsification? So I tried fake emulsification <laughs> and I said the rex was small and then the lens started to dive posteriorly. So at that point in time, I said, nope, this is not going to work. I need to do a different approach. Now I'm trying to see if I can split it with my same tools that I use for cataract surgery. This was too dense. Wow. And again, the dollar difference loops. This is a much thinner loop to see maybe the loop was too big. And if I use less volume, maybe I can get it out to that same incision. That again, still didn't work. As you can tell, this is now, I don't know what attempt around uh, third, fourth, I lost count. Um, so try and rotating it, making sure everything is nice and open. You can see that the redness, by the way, shows that this incision internally is larger than externally. So it mm -hmm. actually goes up in a little funnel like this. This is a my loop. It's called it's made by Zeiss. It's a, I think, a, a specific uh, mylar loop, um, mm -hmm. so almost metal that wraps around the lens and allows you to, with a small opening, then cut the lens in half. To me, it almost looks like you're lassoing all the way around and then you're just Correct. gonna start tightening it up yeah. right there to try to chop it in half. Correct. And at some point it goes all the way around and actually successfully splits it in two. And you can see still how much, how dense that particular lens is I'm using a second instrument to try and keep that exactly in the right spot uh, <laughs> because it just moves a lot. Uh, if it's not perfectly held symmetrical, the lens has a tendency to just flip. And so my second instrument through the side port stabilizes the lens so it stays in one place. And now you can see successfully Ooh. it's split through and yeah, successfully. Yeah, get the Grand Canyon now. <laughs> exactly. And now that lens comes, the loop comes out in a small little piece. Now, more manageable pieces, these are again, the whole lens is about 11 millimeters in um, uh, diameter. And this allows me to again, split it in half. 9 to 11, so this is probably four, four and a half, so it fits through a five millimeter incision. But again, you still just see the density, and now it comes up much more easily. Well, you still got the two halves to deal with, but the first one came out through that incision right there, and now you got to deal with the second piece. Yes. Always surrounding with viscoelastic to protect the cornea, and there's usually a small little layer of viscoelastic between the cornea and the um, lens piece, and here it comes out in one piece, delivered through the main incision. Much easier if it's smaller. Uh, this lens. Again, the patient was already vitrectomized. So, and here you see some remnants of the bag right there that's coming oh, out. Oh, yeah. This. And there's no vitreous there because, again, the patient was already vitrectomized. Uh, the rest is just hydrated out, little lens fragments. And the patient at the end is left a fake because there's also a little piece of capsule at the border there. Just to be safe, I do a vitrectomy to make sure uh, I'm not just based on assumption that there's no vitreous. So, I cleaned up the rest. And at the end, you can see the very big difference. This little white stuff that's injected is catalog. Any vitreous would show up just by being, we call it throwing a sheet over a ghost, it would show up. And here's some more viscoelastic that's left behind. It can irrigate it out to decrease the chance of a pressure spike. Wounds are hydrated. This is a wound, even though it is large, it's self-sealing. So this only sutures are places in the conjunctiva to seal it over the um, opening in the sclera. So different to a regular counter surgery, that wound starts in the white part and gets tunneled into the cornea. And then the conjunctiva is covered over mm. it and that seals very nicely. This patient did extremely well, and because he was a high myo, status post buckle, status post retinal surgery, 
D is doing well without an IOLN, so it's aphakic, and his prescription is, I think, around plus two. And because this is limited potential anyway, he was already very happy with the outcome as it is. For a patient with better potential to their vision, could that could they receive a lens implant also Absolutely. at some point? You can do it later, but in this case, there was so much trauma going on, I wanted things to settle down and then actually retake measurements to see if it's beneficial. And uh, with the refraction, with a plus two, I'm not sure any patient would actually benefit from intraocular surgery. But if it was a plus 10, a higher prescription that would necessitate large prescription, that might be worth it. Another thing to note and we'll, um, is the endothelial cell count in this was not damaged a lot. The amount of phaco energy that would have to be used to remove a lens like that mm -hmm. would be pretty high. And so again, reasons for that kind of surgery as opposed to regular phaco is one, couldn't do it because the lens was too unstable, but two, would have required tons of energy that would have damaged the cornea problem. Mm -hmm.